Cyrus guided the rusty venturer through the asteroid field, the ship's patchwork hull creaking as it wove between the floating debris. His eyes darted across the cockpit screens, analyzing the wreckage for any signs of valuable salvage. Steady as she goes, old Rusty, he murmured, his hands deftly manipulating the controls. The ship responded with a groan, its engines straining against the gravitational pull of the larger asteroids. Patch's cheerful beeps echoed through the comm system as the little bot zipped around the ship's exterior, its optical sensor scanning the debris enthusiastically. Ooh, shiny, it chirped. Might be useful, might be junk. Only one way to find out. Cyrus chuckled despite the tension in his shoulders. Patch's relentless optimism was a welcome distraction from the ghost that haunted him. The memory of his crew's final moments, their screams cut short by the pirate's weapons, still echoed in his mind. Focus, Cyrus, Ukus intoned, its voice cutting through his thoughts. The energy signature is growing stronger. We're approaching the derelict ship. Cyrus leaned forward, squinting at the viewscreen. A shape emerged from the swirling debris, its outline barely visible against the starfield. As they drew closer, the shape resolved into a battered ship, its hull pockmarked with scorch marks and gaping holes. Looks like it's been through hell, Cyrus muttered. Indeed, Yukus agreed. Scans indicate significant structural damage. The ship appears to have been abandoned. Cyrus nodded, his mind already racing with possibilities. If they could salvage some useful components from the derelict ship, it might give them the edge they needed to survive in this uncharted sector. Patch, you're up, he called, his voice echoing through the cargo bay. See if you can find us a way inside that tin can. The little bot chirped in affirmative, its mismatched lights blinking in a cheerful pattern. With a whir of its anti-gravity generators, Patch jetted towards the derelict ship, leaving a faint trail of ionized particles in its wake. Cyrus watched it go, his eyes tracking the bot's progress through the debris field. A flicker of hope stirred in his chest, a feeling he'd thought long extinguished. Maybe, just maybe, they'd find something on that abandoned ship, some piece of tech or forgotten supply that could help them get one step closer to home, to the life they'd left behind so long ago. Cyrus watched as Patch zipped towards the derelict ship the bot's mismatched lights blinking in a pattern that seemed to convey its excitement. He couldn't help smiling at the bot's enthusiasm, even as his nerves thrummed with anticipation. UKs, keep an eye on Patch's progress, Cyrus said, his eyes never leaving the viewscreen. I don't want any surprises. Affirmative, the AI responded, its voice cool and measured. Patch has located a docking port on the derelict's starboard side. It appears to be functional. Cyrus nodded, his hands already moving over the controls. He guided the rusty venturer towards the derelict ship, the rusty venturer's engines humming as they propelled it through the debris field. As they drew closer, the extent of the damage to the derelict ship became clear. Its hull was pockmarked with scorch marks and gaping holes, and one of its engines appeared to have been torn clean off. Looks like it's been through a hell of a fight, Cyrus muttered, his brow furrowing. Indeed, Yukis agreed, but the energy signature is still strong. There may be valuable tech on board. Cyrus brought the rusty venturer alongside the derelict ship, the two craft's hulls almost touching. With a gentle thunk, the docking clamps engaged, securing the ships together. Cyrus let out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. All right, let's gear up, he said, pushing himself out of the pilot's chair. Patch, meet us at the airlock. The bot chirped an affirmative, its voice crackling over the comm system. Cyrus made his way to the weapons locker, his boots clanging against the metal grating of the floor. He grabbed his trusty pistol, which he had nicknamed Pain, and a few extra power cells, slotting them into his belt. He also slung a pack over his shoulder, filled with basic medical supplies and a few tools. As he approached the airlock, he found Patch already waiting for him its multiple arms twitching with excitement. Cyrus couldn't help but chuckle at the bot's excitement for exploration. All right, Patch, he said, patting the bot's dented hull. Let's see what we can find. He stepped into the airlock, the hiss of pressurized air filling his ears. As the outer door slid open, revealing the dark interior of the derelict ship, 
Cyrus felt a familiar thrill run through him. The unknown lay ahead, filled with danger and possibility. But with his trusty crew by his side, he knew they could handle whatever challenges lay ahead. Hopefully. Cyrus stepped into the derelict ship, his heart pounding in his chest. The interior was dark, the only light coming from the flickering emergency lights that cast an eerie glow over the corridor. The air was stale and thick with the scent of burnt metal and something else, making Cyrus's stomach churn. As he moved deeper into the ship, the signs of a pirate raid became more evident. Scorch marks marred the walls and debris littered the floor. Cyrus stepped over a twisted piece of metal, his boot crunching on the shattered glass beneath. Yukes, are you picking up any life signs? He asked, his voice echoing in the empty corridor. Negative, the AI replied. But I am detecting several data logs that may provide more information about what happened here. Cyrus nodded, his jaw clenching. He felt he already knew what had happened. Pirates were a constant threat in this part of space, and he had seen their handiwork before. Cyrus froze as they entered what appeared to be the ship's cargo bay. The room was in shambles, with containers and crates strewn about haphazardly. But it was the bloodstains that caught his eye. They were everywhere, on the walls, the floor, even the ceiling. Some were old and dried, while others looked fresh. Cyrus swallowed hard, his mind flashing back to his own crew's fate. He could still hear their screams, still see the terror in their eyes as the pirates boarded their ship. He shook his head, trying to push the memories away. Patch, see if you can access any of the ship's logs, he said, his voice rough. Maybe we can find out what happened to the crew. The bot chirped an affirmative and rolled over to a nearby console. After a few moments, a holographic display flickered to life, showing a grainy video feed. Cyrus leaned in closer, his eyes narrowing. The video showed the ship's crew, their alien faces contorted in fear and panic. They were running, shouting, as laser fire erupted around them. Cyrus watched as one crew member fell, clutching his chest as blood bloomed beneath his fingers. Cyrus felt a lump form in his throat as he watched the desperate struggle unfold. It was all too familiar, all too real. He knew firsthand the terror and desperation these people must have felt in their final moments. Cyrus moved further into the derelict ship, his heart heavy with the weight of the crew's fate. As he entered what appeared to be the ship's command center, his eyes fell on a blinking light on the control panel. Hey, UKs, what is that? He asked, pointing to the light. The AI's voice crackled through his earpiece. It appears to be an audio log, Cyrus. Shall I play it? Cyrus nodded, bracing himself for what he might hear. The log crackled to life, and a woman's voice filled the room. Captain's log. Update to the previous entry. We've been sent to investigate unusual energy readings in this sector. Galactic Command believes it could be a new fuel source, a discovery that would change the course of our civilization. But despite our best efforts and the most advanced scanning technology, we've found nothing. It's as if the anomaly never existed. The log continued, the captain's voice growing more strained with each passing sentence. It detailed the ship's mission and the crew's mounting frustration at the lack of progress. They had been searching for weeks, scouring every inch of the sector, but to no avail. Cyrus listened intently, his brow furrowed in concentration, hoping for clues or hints that might help him understand what had happened to the ill-fated vessel and its crew. Suddenly, the woman's voice took on a panicked tone. We're under attack. Pirates have boarded the ship. They're after the cargo. All hands. Prepare to repel borders. Laser fire and screams filled the room, and Cyrus felt his heart clench. The log cut off abruptly, leaving only static in its wake. Cyrus stood there momentarily, his mind reeling with the implications of what he had just heard. Hey, did you catch that bit about unusual energy readings? He asked, his voice tight. Affirmative, Cyrus. This ship was investigating a potential new fuel source in this sector. Cyrus frowned, his mind racing. Could this be the key to getting back home? If he could find this new fuel source, perhaps he could repair the rusty venturer's damaged jump drive and finally return to Earth. 
But first, he needed to learn more about what happened to this ship and its crew. He couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to this than just a simple pirate raid. Patch, see if you can find any more logs or data that might give us a clue about what they found, he said, his voice determined. The bot chirped and set to work, its scanners sweeping the room for any additional information. Cyrus watched, his heart heavy with the weight of the lives lost on this ship, but also with a glimmer of hope that he might finally have a lead on his way home. Ukes, download any data you can find about this new fuel source they were investigating. If it's out there, we need to find it. The AI's holographic form flickered with something akin to a smile at the sound of its nickname. Formally designated as the Universal Knowledge and Information Sentience, or UKAIS, it had long since become something more. Cyrus had granted the AI a nickname, a simple act that resonated deeply within its complex algorithms. The touch of humanity made it feel more connected to its human companion, bridging the gap between their vastly different existences. Understood, Cyrus. Scanning now. Cyrus moved to the command chair and sat down heavily, his mind racing. If this new fuel source was real, it could change everything for him, including his chances of getting home and the entire galaxy. A discovery like that would be worth billions, maybe even trillions. But it would also paint a target on the back of anyone who possessed it. The pirates who attacked this ship were likely just the beginning. If word got out about what they had found, every scoundrel and warlord in the sector would be after it. Cyrus's thoughts turned to his crew, lost to a similar fate. The pain of their loss still haunted him, a constant ache in his chest that never quite went away. He couldn't let the same thing happen to anyone else. Not if he could help it. He stood up, his jaw set with determination. We need to find that fuel source before anyone else does, and when we do, we will ensure it gets into the right hands. No more innocent lives lost to greed and violence. Yuke's voice crackled over the comm. Data download complete, Cyrus. I've found coordinates for the last known location of the energy anomaly. Understood, he replied. For now it would have to wait, he thought. They still had a ship to salvage. Hey, Yukes, did you ever get a location on what we came here for in the first place? Cyrus listened intently as Yukes reported its findings. I've detected a heavily damaged but potentially salvageable power core deep within the ship's engine room. It could be a valuable find. A spark of excitement ignited within Cyrus, his heart racing at the prospect of a valuable find. A working power core could fetch a hefty sum on the black market, providing much-needed credits for supplies and repairs. Or even better, it could provide much-needed upgrades for the Rusty Venture, enhancing its capabilities and increasing their chances of survival in this uncharted region of space. Great work, Yukus. Let's go check it out, Cyrus said, a determined grin spreading across his face. As they made their way through the derelict's eerie corridors, Cyrus couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The ship seemed too quiet, too still, like a tomb floating in the void. The only sounds were their footsteps echoing off the metal walls and the occasional creak of the ship's structure. Suddenly, a loud clang echoed through the hallway, followed by a hiss of escaping gas. The acrid smell of chemicals filled the air, stinging Cyrus's nostrils. Years of military training and field medic experience kicked in. Cyrus swiftly held his breath, his hand reaching not just for his pistol, but for the compact mask attached to his belt. What the hell was that? He muttered as his mask suctioned to his face, his eyes rapidly assessing the situation. He recognized the smell, a corrosive toxin, not instantly lethal, but debilitating if inhaled in large amounts. Patch chirped nervously, its sensors scanning the area, various lights blinking on its boxy frame. Patch's voice filled the room. Traps like teeth, a ship's cold grin, where dangers lie concealed within. Puzzles twist with hidden might to test your wits both day and night. Each step a risk, a careful tread, where clever schemes lie just ahead. On the money as always, Patch, thought Cyrus as he digested the bot's poetic observation. Cyrus frowned, his brow furrowing in confusion and concern. Why would a simple cargo vessel have traps and puzzles? It didn't make sense. A ship like this should be designed for efficiency, 
for moving goods from one port to another with minimal fuss, unless... This must have something to do with the cargo, he muttered, realization dawning like a cold wave washing over his body. Something like a contingency plan if they were ever boarded. And they've rigged the place to keep unwanted visitors out to protect whatever they have on this ship. UK's chimed in, its voice calm and analytical, starkly contrasting to the tense situation. That would explain the level of damage and the lack of any remaining crew. They likely abandoned the ship when the traps were triggered by accident or design. It's possible they never intended to return. Cyrus sighed, running a hand through his hair, frustration evident in the gesture. Great. It's just what we needed. A ship full of deadly traps stood between us and that power core, as if things weren't complicated enough already. But he knew they couldn't turn back now. The potential payoff was too great. And if anyone could navigate a treacherous ship, it was him and his crew. All right, listen up, he said, his voice filled with determination. We're going to have to be smart about this. Ukes and Patch, I need you both to scan for other traps or puzzles in our path. Patch, buddy, you're on point. Keep an eye out for anything suspicious. The two chirped their acknowledgement, and together they began their cautious journey deeper into the heart of the derelict, the promise of a valuable power core spurring them forward. Cyrus pressed on, his determination fueled by the promise of the power core ahead. The derelict ship seemed to come alive with each step, its traps and puzzles waiting to ensnare the unwary. A pressure plate here, a hidden laser there. The ship was a labyrinth of danger, a testament to the lengths the crew had gone to protect their precious cargo. His keen eyes scanned the corridors, alert for any sign of movement or hidden threat. The air hung heavy with the weight of secrets long buried, and the eerie silence was broken only by the echoes of his footfalls. Yet Cyrus remained undaunted, driven by a purpose that burned brighter than the fear of the unknown. He knew that somewhere in the depths of this forsaken vessel lay the key to his survival, and he would stop at nothing to claim it. Patch scuttled ahead, its sensors scanning for any signs of trouble. The bot's movements were erratic, almost nervous, as if it could sense the task's weight before them. Cyrus couldn't help but feel sympathy for the little bot. It had been through so much already, yet here it was, braving the unknown again. Yukes, on the other hand, seemed unperturbed by the challenges ahead. The AI's calm, analytical voice filled the corridors, providing steady information and guidance. Detecting a high-energy laser grid ahead, it warned. Recommend proceeding with caution. Cyrus nodded, his eyes narrowing as he studied the glowing beams crisscrossing the hallway, their ominous red light casting an eerie glow on the metal walls. He had seen this type of trap before during his military days, and the sight of it sent a chill down his spine. It was designed to slice through anything that passed through it, leaving nothing but a pile of smoking debris in its wake, a deadly and efficient security measure. Patch, can you find a way to disable it? He asked, his voice tight with tension, barely above a whisper, as if the sound itself might trigger the lasers. The bot chirped an affirmative, its cheerful tone at odds with the gravity of the situation. It set to work its various tools and appendages whirring and clicking as it probed the laser grid's control panel with surprising dexterity. Minutes ticked by, each feeling like an eternity as Cyrus watched Patch work, his heart pounding in his chest, palms slick with sweat as he silently urged the bot to hurry. The longer they stayed here exposed in this corridor, the greater the risk of detection or worse. Finally, with a triumphant beep, Patch succeeded, and the lasers winked out, leaving the hallway clear. Cyrus let out a deep sigh of relief, a grin spreading across his face. Nice job, patchwork old buddy, he said, giving the bot an affectionate pat. But their victory was short-lived. As they rounded the next corner, they faced yet another obstacle. A massive blast door, its surface scarred and pitted from years of neglect. Cyrus frowned, his mind racing as he tried to figure past it. He knew the power core lay just beyond, tantalizingly close yet far out of reach. Yukas, any ideas? he asked, hoping that the AI's vast knowledge might hold the key to their success. Cyrus stared at the blast door, his brow furrowed in frustration. The power core was so close he could almost feel its energy pulsing through the metal, yet this formidable barrier stood between them and their prize. 
He sighed, running a hand through his short, curly hair as he turned to his companions. All right, team, we need ideas. That door isn't going to open itself. Patch chirped, its single optical sensor blinking as it scanned the door. A riddle wrapped in an enigma, a puzzle to be solved. The key to our success in creativity involved. Cyrus chuckled despite himself. Thanks for the poetry, Patch, but I think we need something a bit more concrete. Yuke's holographic form flickered to life beside them, its cool blue light casting an eerie glow in the dimly lit corridor. The AI's avatar stood motionless, its translucent features revealing a pensive expression. I've analyzed the door's locking mechanism. It appears to be controlled by a complex algorithm that changes every few minutes. Brute force is unlikely to be effective. Cyrus nodded, his mind already racing with possibilities. He raised a hand to his chin, his brown eyes narrowing in concentration. Okay, so we need to outsmart it. Patch, you're the resident mechanic. Do you have any ideas? The bot whirred thoughtfully for a moment before responding, its multiple articulated arms twitching slightly as it processed the query. The lock's complexity, a challenge to unravel, Perhaps a bypass through the ship's systems to travel? You mean hack into the ship's mainframe and try to override the lock from there? Cyrus asked, his eyebrows raised in surprise. He leaned back against the corridor wall, his worn jumpsuit creasing with the movement. That's actually not a bad idea. As Patch and Yuke set to work on the plan, their mechanical and digital minds working in tandem, Cyrus felt a familiar rumble in his stomach. He'd been so focused on the mission that he'd forgotten to eat. Rummaging through Patch's storage compartment, he found a few ration packs and tore into one, savoring the bland but filling meal. The taste was unremarkable, but it provided the sustenance he needed to keep going. You know, he said between bites, his voice muffled slightly by the food, this reminds me of that time we were stuck on that abandoned mining station, trying to fix the life support systems. Remember that, Ukes? The AI's holographic face smiled, the expression somehow conveying both fondness and exasperation. Indeed, as I recall, you nearly electrocuted yourself trying to rewire the control panel. Cyrus laughed, the memory bringing a moment of levity to their tense situation. His eyes crinkled at the corners, the scar crossing his eyebrow, stretching slightly with the movement. Hey, it worked, didn't it? We got out of there alive. Barely. Yukas retorted, its tone dry but not without affection. The AI's avatar shimmered slightly, as if shaking its head in amused disbelief. As they bantered back and forth, Cyrus felt a surge of gratitude for his unusual crew. They might not be human, but they were loyal and resourceful, qualities that had saved his life more times than he could count. With their help, he knew they'd find a way past this obstacle, too. Cyrus watched as Patch and Yukes worked on hacking the ship's mainframe, their mechanical and digital minds working in perfect harmony. The bot's articulated arms moved with surprising dexterity, its tools sparking and whirring as it manipulated the exposed wiring. Yukes's holographic form hovered nearby, its translucent fingers dancing across an invisible interface as it processed data at lightning speed. The minutes ticked by each one feeling like an eternity to Cyrus. He paced back and forth, his boots clanking against the metal floor, his mind racing with possibilities. What if they couldn't get past the door? What if the power core was damaged beyond repair? What if... A sudden beep from Patch interrupted his spiraling thoughts. The bot chirped excitedly, its optical sensor flashing with what Cyrus could only interpret as triumph. Success! The lock undone! A path forward, the prize to be won! Cyrus felt a surge of relief and excitement wash over him. He clapped Patch on its dented shoulder, a grin spreading across his face. Nice work, buddy. I knew you could do it. Yuke's holographic avatar nodded in agreement, the projected humanoid features conveying a mix of pride and satisfaction at their companion's success. Indeed, Patch's unorthodox approach to the lock proved highly effective. The sealed door should open momentarily, granting us access to whatever lies beyond. As if on cue, the blast door hissed and groaned, its heavy metal frame shuddering as it slowly slid open. 
Cyrus felt his heart race with anticipation, his hand instinctively reaching for the pistol at his side. He knew they were close to their goal, but he also knew that the greatest dangers often lurk just beyond the threshold of success. With a deep breath, he stepped forward, his companions close behind. The corridor beyond the door was dark and eerily silent, the only sound the faint hum of the ship's systems. Cyrus flicked on his flashlight, the beam cutting through the gloom like a knife. Stay sharp, he murmured, his voice low and tense. We don't know what's waiting for us in there. Patch and Ukes acknowledged in unison, their sensors scanning the area for any signs of danger. Together they pressed onward, their footsteps echoing in the empty hallway. Cyrus could feel the tension in his muscles, the adrenaline coursing through his veins. Cyrus stepped cautiously into the engine room, his heart pounding in his chest, the sound echoing in his ears. The room was dimly lit, the shadows seeming to dance and flicker with each step he took. The only illumination came from the faint, eerie glow of the power core at the room's center, casting a ghostly hue over the scene before him. As his eyes slowly adjusted to the oppressive gloom, he noticed the bodies scattered haphazardly across the cold metal floor. The ship's personnel, their lifeless forms twisted and still, like macabre sculptures frozen in time. But it was the figure in the center of the room, lying in a pool of faint light, that truly caught his attention and made his breath catch in his throat. A female alien, clad in scorched and battered armor that had seen better days, lay motionless on the ground, her limbs splayed at odd angles. Cyrus approached warily, his footsteps echoing in the eerie stillness, his hand resting on his pistol, ready to draw it at a moment's notice should there be any sudden movement. UK's scan for life signs, he murmured, his voice tight with tension, barely above a whisper. The AI complied, its sensors sweeping over the room, including the fallen pirate. The faint hum of its systems was the only sound in the oppressive silence. After a moment that seemed far too long, Yuka spoke, its tone laced with surprise and a hint of disbelief. Cyrus, I am detecting faint vital signs emanating from the alien. It appears she has entered a near-death state, likely as a survival mechanism to preserve her life in the face of grave injury. Cyrus frowned, his brow furrowing as his mind raced with the implications of this revelation. If the pirate was still alive, clinging to life by a mere thread, they had a decision to make, and it would not be easy. Did they leave her to her fate, to let the cold embrace of death claim her, while they took the power core and continued on their way? Or did they attempt to save her life, to extend a helping hand even to one who might be an enemy? He turned to his companions, his expression troubled, his eyes searching for guidance. What do you think? Should we try to help or leave her to the fate she has brought upon herself? Patch chirped uncertainly, its optical sensor flickering as it processed the situation, the light reflecting off its battered metal surface. A choice to make, a path to take, to save or leave, the decision we face, the consequences of our actions, only time will tell. Yuke's ever the pragmatist, offered its analysis, its voice calm and measured. Cyrus, while it is within our capability to provide medical assistance and potentially save her life, we must consider the risks inherent in such an action. This individual is a pirate, and we cannot know her true intentions or allegiances. Bringing her aboard the rusty venturer could endanger our mission and lives. Cyrus nodded slowly, his jaw clenching as he weighed his options the gravity of the decision weighing heavily upon him. On the one hand, leaving the pirate to die, to let her slip away into the void, felt wrong on a fundamental level, a violation of his core values as a medic, as someone who had sworn an oath to preserve life. On the other, Yukes was right. They had no way of knowing if she could be trusted, if saving her would only bring more danger and strife down upon them. Patch, can you deploy a portal light so we can brighten up this room? Cyrus asked. The bot chirped in response. With a flick of an articulated arm, a compact orb detached from its chassis and rose overhead. It pulsed once, then flared to life, washing the room in a steady, bright glow. Cyrus nodded in gratitude and stowed his flashlight. 
He knelt beside the fallen alien, studying her face, taking in every detail. Despite the differences in their species and the strange contours of her features, he could see the pain etched into her expression, the struggle for survival that had driven her to this desperate state. At that moment, looking upon her, he made his decision, his resolve hardening like steel. We're taking her with us, he said, his voice firm and unwavering, brooking no argument. I won't leave her to die, not when we have the means to help, to make a difference. We'll deal with the consequences as they come and face them head on. But I won't let her life slip away, not when it's within our power to save her. Cyrus nodded, his decision made. He turned to his companions, his voice filled with determination. Ukes, patchwork, we're taking her back to the ship. We'll give her the medical treatment she needs. But first, we need to stabilize her here. He knelt beside the fallen pirate, his hands moving with practiced efficiency as he assessed her injuries, his mind slipping into the familiar patterns of triage and treatment. Patch scuttled forward, its various tools at the ready, awaiting Cyrus's instructions. Ukes, I need you to scan for any internal bleeding or critical injuries, Cyrus said, his eyes never leaving the alien's face, watching for any signs of consciousness or distress. The AI complied, its sensor sweeping over the pirate's body and its system's soft beeping filling the air. After a moment, it chirped, its voice filled with a mix of concern and determination. Scans indicate severe blood loss and potential organ damage. Immediate intervention required to ensure survival. Cyrus nodded, his jaw clenching as he processed the information. He turned to UK's, his voice tight with urgency. UK's, I need you to guide me through the treatment process. We don't have much time. The AI pulsed, its holographic form flickering to life beside Cyrus, its voice calm and measured as it began to provide instructions. First, we must stop the bleeding, apply pressure to the wounds and use the nanogel from the medkit to seal them. Cyrus followed the AI's guidance, his hands moving with precision and care as he worked to stem the flow of blood the nanogel forming a protective barrier over the wounds. Patch assisted, and its tools provided additional support and monitored the pirate's vital signs. As they worked, the minutes ticking by with agonizing slowness, Cyrus couldn't help but wonder about the pirate's story, about what had brought her to this point, lying broken and near death on the cold metal floor of an abandoned ship. But those questions would have to wait. For now, his focus was solely on saving her life, on giving her a chance to see another day. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Yuke spoke, its voice filled with a mix of relief and caution. Her condition is stable for now, but we must get her back to the ship for further treatment. Cyrus nodded, his shoulders sagging with exhaustion and the release of tension. He turned to Patch, his voice weary, but filled with resolve. Patch, Help me get her to the Rusty Venture. We'll continue treatment there. Patch responded with a chirp, a series of clicks and whirs accompanying the movement of its articulated arms. A compact module slid from its storage compartment, swiftly unfolding into a medical stretcher with mechanical precision. As they carefully lifted the pirate, Cyrus's mind turned to the power core, the reason they had come to this derelict in the first place. UK's, while we prep for transport, you'll need to find that power core. We can't leave empty-handed, not after all this. Cyrus watched as UK's holographic form flickered out, the AI's attention turning to the task of locating the power core. He and Patch worked in tandem, synchronizing as they prepared the injured pirate for transport. Cyrus's mind raced with questions about the woman's identity and the circumstances that had led her to this point but he pushed them aside, focusing on the immediate need to get her to safety. As they secured the pirate on a makeshift stretcher, UK's voice crackled through the comm system, a hint of excitement in its usually measured tone. Cyrus, I've located the power core, but there's something else here that I think you should see. Cyrus's brow furrowed, curiosity piqued by the AI's words. What is it, Ukes? I found an encrypted data pad on one of the crew members. Based on their uniform, they appear to have been a high-ranking officer. The encryption is complex, but I believe I can crack it given time. 
Cyrus nodded, his mind already racing with the possibilities of what the data pad might contain. Bring it with you, Ukes. It could be invaluable if it's related to the information we've gathered so far. He watched as Ukes used its levitation beam to retrieve the data pad, the device floating gently through the air to rest in the AI's holographic hand. With a final sweep of the area, Ukes returned to Cyrus and Patch, the power core and data pad securely in its possession. Cyrus took a deep breath, his gaze sweeping over the carnage of the engine room one last time. The weight of the lives lost here hung heavy on his shoulders, but he knew there was nothing more he could do for them now. His priority was surviving and rescuing the injured pirate. Let's get back to the rusty venture, he said, his voice filled with a mix of exhaustion and determination. We've got work to do. With his companions at his side, Cyrus carefully maneuvered a portable stretcher through the derelict ship's corridors, his mind already racing ahead to the challenges that lay before them. The power core was a significant find, but the data pad held his attention now. What secrets might it hold, and how might they shape the course of their journey through this uncharted corner of the universe? Only time would tell. But for now, Cyrus knew one thing for certain. They had survived another day, and that was a victory in itself. Cyrus led the way back through the derelict ship's corridors, his senses on high alert as he navigated the path to the docking bay. Ukes and Patch followed close behind, the AI carrying the power core and encrypted data pass while the repair bot carefully maneuvered the stretcher, bearing the injured pirate. As they neared the docking bay, Ukes's voice crackled through the comm system, a note of urgency in its tone. Cyrus, I'm detecting a ship docking and new life forms in the bay. It appears we have company. Cyrus's heart raced, his mind immediately jumping to the worst case scenario. Pirates, the same ones who had likely plundered this ship in the first place. And now it seemed they were back for more. He motioned for the others to stay low and out of sight as they approached the docking bay, his eyes scanning the area for any signs of movement. As they drew closer, he caught a glimpse of the pirates through the bay's viewing port, their figures silhouetted against the harsh light of the docking clamps. There were pirates in suits floating around the rusty venture in space, their movements agitated as they tried to find a way inside. Cyrus felt a surge of pride as he watched them struggle, knowing that the ship's creative defense systems were doing their job. The pirates who were inside the docking bay were jabbing at the airlock with their weapons and trying to hack the access panel, but to no avail. The venturers' mismatched armor and unorthodox security measures held fast, repelling their every attempt at forced entry. Cyrus allowed himself a small, grim smile. These pirates had picked the wrong ship to mess with today. He and his small crew may be lost and outgunned, but they weren't going down without a fight. Cyrus turned to Ukase and Patch, his voice low and urgent the gravity of the situation weighing heavily upon him. They're after the data pad and the pirate, he said, his mind racing as he tried to formulate a plan, eyes darting between his two companions. He knew they had to act fast before the pursuing forces caught up to them. Every second counted. We need to find a way to get past them and back to the ship, he continued, his tone resolute despite the dire circumstances. Cyrus's hand instinctively reached for his weapon, a gesture of readiness and determination. He scanned their surroundings, searching for any advantage or escape route they could exploit. The rusty venturer was their lifeline, and they had to reach her before it was too late. Ukase's holographic form flickered as it processed the situation, its voice calm and measured. I suggest an ambush, it said, its eyes meeting Cyrus's. We have the element of surprise on our side, and the pirates are distracted by their attempts to enter the ship. Cyrus nodded, his gaze shifting to Patch. The repair bot chirped in agreement, its tools already whirring to life in anticipation of the fight to come. All right, Cyrus said, his voice filled with determination. Here's what we're going to do. Cyrus crouched behind a stack of crates, his heart pounding in his chest as he watched the pirates through the docking bay's viewing port. He glanced at Yukas and Patch, giving them a silent nod. It was time to put their plan into action. With a quick hand signal, Cyrus directed Patch to take up a position on the opposite side of the bay, while Yukas hovered nearby, ready to provide support. Cyrus unholstered Payne, 
the energy pistol humming to life in his grip. He took a deep breath, steeling himself for the fight to come. As the pirates continued their futile attempts to breach the rusty venturer's defenses, Cyrus made his move. He stepped out from behind the crates, leveling pain at the nearest pirate. The energy pistol hummed with deadly intent, its barrel pointed squarely at the pirate's chest. Cyrus's eyes narrowed, his jaw set with grim determination. Step away from the ship, he commanded, his voice ringing out across the bay, echoing off the metal walls. His stance was firm, his grip on the weapon unwavering. The pirate hesitated, clearly weighing the odds of defying the armed man before him. Cyrus's finger tightened on the trigger, ready to unleash the pistol's devastating charge if the pirate made a wrong move. For a moment, no one moved, the tension in the air palpable. Cyrus could feel the sweat beating on his forehead, his heart pounding in his chest as he stared down the barrel of pain at the pirate before him. The seconds seemed to stretch into an eternity, each breath a lifetime in the charged stillness of the bay. This is your one chance, Cyrus spoke, as his grip tightened on his weapon, his voice modulator translating his words into a language the pirates could understand. Then with a snarl, the lead pirate raised his weapon and fired a burst of searing energy, slicing through the air towards Cyrus. He dove to the side, rolling behind a stack of crates as the shot scorched the metal where he had stood just moments before. The acrid smell of ozone filled his nostrils as he crouched, his grip tightening on Payne's handle, ready to return fire immediately. Cyrus leaned out from behind the crates, his finger squeezing Payne's trigger. The pistol responded instantly, its rapid-fire mode sending a blistering burst of energy shots toward the pirates. The searing bolts lit up the bay, forcing the attackers to scatter for cover. Across the expanse of the docking area, Cyrus caught sight of Patch emerging from its own hiding spot. The repair bot had reconfigured its various tools into makeshift weapons, a testament to its surprising ingenuity. With a determined chirp, Patch launched a barrage of improvised projectiles at the pirates. The unexpected assault caught them off guard. The odd assortment of bolts, nuts, and welding slag peppered their positions in ballistic shells. Ukes joined the fray, its holographic form flickering as it projected a series of decoys around the bay, confusing the pirates and drawing their fire. The shimmering mirages danced and weaved, each one a perfect replica of the AI's humanoid form. The pirates, momentarily disoriented, fired wildly at the illusions, their shots passing harmlessly through the insubstantial holograms. Cyrus exploited the chaos. He reached behind him, yanking out a compact module, unfurling into his eagle-eyed sniper rifle with a snap. Instinct took over as he raised the familiar weapon to his shoulder. Through the mid-range scope, he scanned the haze, his eyes locking onto a charging pirate. Time slowed, the world narrowed down to Cyrus, his steady breath and the crosshairs settling on the target. He squeezed the trigger, the rifle bucking against his shoulder as the armor-piercing round ripped through the air. The pirate collapsed, the devastating shot shredding his haphazard armor. The pirate crumpled to the ground, but his comrades charged forward, their weapons blazing as they closed on Cyrus's position. He knew they needed to end this quickly before the pirates could regroup and overwhelm them. Signaling to Patch, he orchestrated a swift counterattack. The bot unleashed a volley of smoke grenades, choking the bay in a thick, disorienting haze. In sync with Patch's action, Cyrus pulled a handful of shocky poppers from the pouch on his belt. He hurled the marble-sized metallic balls into the haze. As they bounced against the floor, the poppers hummed to life, each becoming a miniature magnet. They zipped through the smoke, finding metal and latching onto the pirate's armor. With sharp pops, they delivered powerful electrical jolts, sending some pirates sprawling and momentarily paralyzing others. Cyrus knew the effect was temporary. It was time to seize the moment. Cyrus raced towards the rusty venture under the cover of the thick smoke, his crew close behind him. The jolting bodies of the pirates, momentarily incapacitated by the shocky poppers, littered the bay floor. Patch and Cyrus laid down a barrage of covering fire, their weapons flashing in the haze as they kept the remaining pirates at bay. Ukes levitated the injured pirate on the stretcher as the AI made a beeline for the ship with the injured pirate in tow. 
risking a prolonged escape by diverting power to the ship's defenses via his wrist pad, Cyrus activated his ship's sentry mode. The rusty venturer's weapons automatically sprang to life as they neared the ship. The laser turrets swiveled, locking onto the pirate ship docked nearby, unleashing a hail of searing energy bolts. Cyrus hoped this would be enough to allow them to slip away. The airlock hissed open and Cyrus surged inside. He pivoted, unleashing a barrage of laser blasts from pain into the dissipating smoke. Yuke still towing the injured pirate, and Patch followed close behind, hurrying past Cyrus into the ship's safety. The airlock door slammed shut, sealing them off from the chaos outside. The ship's shields flared to life, a shimmering barrier that absorbed the pirates' desperate attempts to breach the hull. Cyrus sagged against the wall, his chest heaving as he gulped down air. The adrenaline that had fueled his mad dash began to fade, leaving him shaky and exhausted. They had made it, but the narrow escape served as a stark reminder of the dangers they faced. With the secrets they carried and the uncharted reaches of space still ahead of them, Cyrus knew they couldn't afford to let their guard down. The rusty venturer might be their sanctuary for now, but the perils lurking beyond its hull were far from over. Cyrus's heart raced as he sprinted down the corridor, his boots pounding against the metal grating. He burst into the cockpit, adrenaline surging through his veins, and leaped into the pilot's seat. His fingers ran across the controls, and years of experience guided his movements as he initiated the startup sequence. Cyrus's heart sank as he realized his earlier decision had consequences. Diverting power to the ship's defenses had drained vital reserves, and now the rusty venturer's startup sequence was agonizingly slow. He cursed under his breath, a knot of tension forming in his gut. His gamble had been simple. Once they were aboard, the enemy wouldn't risk outright destruction for fear of losing what they desperately wanted, the encrypted data pad, and their injured crew member. Still, the waiting game was nerve-wracking. After an intense waiting period, the rusty venturer's engines coughed and sputtered, fighting to break free from the derelict's unyielding grasp. Yuke's status report, Cyrus demanded. His gaze fixed on the view screen. The pirate ship hung in the void like a predator ready to strike, its weapon systems glowing with menacing energy. Shields at 60% and rising, the AI reported, its voice a beacon of calm amidst the chaos. Engines at 70% power. We require additional time to fully disengage from the derelict. Cyrus clenched his jaw, his grip tightening on the controls until his knuckles turned white. The rusty venturer let out a pain groan, its hull straining against the docking clamp's relentless hold. In a sudden burst of movement, the ship surged forward, the clamp shattering under the immense pressure. A fleeting sense of relief washed over Cyrus, only to be shattered by the pirate ship's onslaught. The rusty venturer shook violently as the enemy's laser blasts slammed into its shields, sending sparks cascading from the control panel. Alarms screamed throughout the ship, their piercing wails filling the air. Cyrus's eyes flickered to the shield read out, his heart sinking as he watched the percentage plummet with each successive hit. Hey, patchwork, I need more power for the engines. Cyrus bellowed over the cacophony of alarms, his voice raw with urgency. The bot, its single sensor eye blazing with unwavering determination, scampered to the engineering console. Its articulated arms moved with blinding speed, rerouting power from non-essential systems to the engines. The rusty venturer leaped forward, propelled by the extra power boost, putting distance between itself and the derelict, with the pirate ship in hot pursuit. Cyrus's hands flew across the controls, guiding the rusty venturer through a treacherous debris field. The pirate ship followed close behind, its weapons still spitting fire. Cyrus knew they couldn't maintain this desperate chase indefinitely. They needed to vanish into the chaos of the debris field. Yukes, find me a way out of here, Cyrus commanded, his voice strained by the effort to keep the ship on course. The AI's holographic form wavered, its eyes scanning the star-studded expanse ahead. There, it said, highlighting a narrow gap between two colossal chunks of twisted metal. If we can navigate through that opening, we may be able to elude them. Cyrus nodded, his jaw set with determination. He angled the rusty venturer towards the gap, 
the ship groaning as it strained to navigate the tight space. The pirate ship, too large to follow, unleashed a final barrage of laser fire before falling behind. Cyrus's heart raced as he deftly navigated the rusty Venturer through the treacherous debris field, the pursuing pirate ship gradually losing ground. A momentary sense of relief washed over him, but it was quickly extinguished as they cleared the debris field and found themselves face to face with a colossal vessel. Its cloaking device shimmered and dissipated, revealing a formidable and intimidating flagship. Cyrus's eyes grew wide with shock and disbelief as the grim reality of their predicament dawned on him. They had unwittingly fallen into an elaborately orchestrated trap. The imposing flagship blocked their path of escape, while smaller pirate ships emerged from the shadows, encircling them from every direction. The rusty venturer hung motionless in the void of space, completely surrounded and utterly vulnerable. The tense silence was abruptly shattered by an incoming hail from the flagship. Cyrus hesitated briefly before responding, his jaw tightening with apprehension. As the view screen flickered to life, the image of a notorious pirate captain filled the screen, his face contorted into a sinister and triumphant grin. Cyrus recognized him immediately. It was Magnus, the vile one, a ruthless and cunning adversary renowned for his cruelty and strategic brilliance. Well... Magnus drawled, his voice dripping with smug satisfaction and barely concealed malice. Look what we have here. The little salvage crew thought they could outsmart us. How delightfully naive. Cyrus remained silent, his mind racing as he desperately tried to assess their dire situation and formulate a plan of action. Magnus leaned forward, his eyes gleaming with a predatory intensity that sent a chill down Cyrus's spine. You played right into my hands, he continued his tone laced with condescension and mock pity. I knew you would detect the ship's power core, and I gambled that you would find my injured crew member and the data pad. It was all part of my meticulously crafted plan, and you fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Cyrus's stomach churned as the full extent of Magnus's elaborate scheme became painfully clear. The pirate captain had orchestrated every move with calculated precision, from the seemingly abandoned ship to the carefully staged pursuit, leading them directly into this inescapable trap. And now, Magnus said, his voice taking on a menacing edge that left no room for doubt or negotiation, you have something that belongs to me, the data pad and my injured crew member. Hand them over and I might consider letting you live. Refuse and I will make you wish you had never set foot in this sector of space. Cyrus glanced at his companions, who he imagined were coming to the same conclusion as him. It was over. They were outgunned and outnumbered, with no clear path to escape. The weight of the situation pressed down on Cyrus's shoulders as he faced the pirate captain's demands, knowing that their lives and the fate of the mysterious data pad hung in the balance. Cyrus stood on the bridge of the rusty venture, his heart pounding as he faced Magnus's fleet's overwhelming force. The pirate captain's ultimatum hung heavy in the air, a suffocating weight that seemed to crush any hope of escape. Cyrus's mind raced, desperately searching for a way out, but every scenario ended in capture or destruction. Suddenly a soft and insistent voice echoed in his mind. Trust me, it whispered, cutting through the chaos of his thoughts. Cyrus blinked, unsure if he had imagined it, but the voice came again, stronger this time. Jump! 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 Realization dawned on him as his thoughts drifted to the injured pirate woman lying in the medbay. It was her voice reaching out to him telepathically. Somehow he knew this to be true. Cyrus's brow furrowed, uncertain whether to trust this unexpected ally. The voice grew more urgent, repeating the command to jump with increasing intensity. Cyrus's gaze darted to the navigation console, where he eyed the controls that could ominously activate the faulty jump drive. He knew the risks. A miscalculated jump could send them hurtling into the heart of a star or the crushing embrace of a black hole. They could end up lost in an uncharted expanse of the universe, far from any hope of rescue. But as the pirate woman's voice resonated in his mind, Cyrus felt an overwhelming sense of trust wash over him. It was as if he could feel her sincerity, 
her desperation to escape Magnus's clutches. He took a deep breath, his decision made. Turning back to the view screen, Cyrus locked eyes with Magnus, a defiant smirk playing across his lips. You know, Magnus, he drawled, his voice dripping with sarcasm. I think we'll take our chances with the unknown. Catch you on the flip side. With a swift motion, Cyrus slammed his hand down on the jump drive activation button. The rusty venturer shuddered violently as the drive engaged, its damaged components straining under the immense power. The stars outside the view screen stretched into long, shimmering lines as the ship hurtled forward, tearing through the fabric of space-time. Cyrus gripped the edge of the console, his knuckles turning white as the ship shook and groaned around him. His companions could be heard making loud remarks behind him. Yet the pirate woman's voice echoed in Cyrus's mind, a constant reassurance amidst the chaos. Cyrus smiled as he closed his eyes and let the vastness of space engulf him.